Hello and welcome to our weekly show Tea Talk, where we'll be discussing latest updates, news, what's happening on the social media, and all that you need to know to have that ease of living in this beautiful country. This week, we'll be talking about one of the major projects that has been launched by the Ministry of Health in collaboration with Novo Nordisk. I'm talking about none other than the OBCD project that was launched by the two entities last month. And for that matter, we have a very special guest joining us today. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Noor al Busaidi, who's the director of the National Diabetes and Endocrine Center. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure. And first of all, wishing you a very happy Ramadan. Thank you for taking out time and joining us today. Thank you. And happy Ramadan to you too. So Dr. Noor, we know that Obesity Project was launched last month at the Ministry of Health. And I was personally there to hear what the presentations were about and what are the main objectives and aims of this project. Can you tell us, uh, tell our viewers a little about the project, please? So uh, we launched two uh, projects uh, in collaboration, Minister of Health with Nova Nordics. One of them is the obes National Obesity uh, Practice Guideline, uh, which is a standard of uh, taking care of patients with obesity. And it will, uh, basically, we will review the international guideline for management of obesity. And we will look our, at our health sector and what do we have to uh, lie down all the steps of management in terms of uh, investigation, management steps, referral, and follow-up. So this will be a tool in all uh, the hand of all primary health care doctors to care for the patient of obesity across Oman. And the second project is the epidemiology study of obesity, which is to look at uh, the comorbidity or disease associated with obesity. And actually, we're looking at the top 10 of these comorbidity and what is the cost and the prevalence of them in Oman. Right. And what exactly are the objectives or what exactly are the two entities aiming to achieve through this collaboration? So we need to educate our healthcare uh, provider uh, how to uh, provide the best care for patients with obesity and to collect more information about obesity in Oman uh, and what is the comorbidity associated with it. We know it is kind of a new disease, but we don't know the cost of it and we don't know what disease associated with obesity in Oman. So this study will shed light on these uh, two views. Right. And how do you see um, the obesity currently in the Sultanate? I know that, you know, you just said that it's a new disease. You know, you're still, people are still looking into it. But how is it currently? Well, I can tell you that 66% of Omani population are either overweight or obese. So the latest uh, survey uh, done here in Oman from uh, uh, World Obesity uh, uh, Federation, WHO, uh, the data show that 66% of our population are either overweight and obese. And if we compare this study to 2018, there is a major increase between 2008 and 2017. Uh, and this data also, we get it from different study. Uh, we see the high prevalence, not only in adults, but also in, unfortunately, our children and uh, adolescents. So I was just going to ask you, doctor, that how do you see the prevalence? Is obesity mainly found in adults or is it the middle age group? Because no way that I would actually consider children to actually fall under the curve of, of obesity. Yeah, so uh, several study comparing again 2008 and 2017, and we see a rise in obesity from grade seven and grade 10. Uh, so there is increase, 16% uh, increase in obesity among boys and 13% increase of, among girls. So unfortunately, we see obesity in uh, kids and adolescents. And of course, we see it in adults across the adulthood age group. But Dr. Noor, you know, I remember we had this discussion. Kids are supposed to be more active. Like they, 
they shouldn't be falling under this curve. They shouldn't be coming under obesity. What do you think is really causing for them to fall under this category? Yeah, so there is multiple reason or multiple causes of obesity. And one of the causes is uh, prenatal exposure. So if the mother is obese or has diabetes, that fetus get affected and there's epigenetic changes put that child at risk of developing obesity and diabetes in their adolescent age group. And of course, now uh, we see there's major changes in our environment. So less activity, more unhealthy food, put the kids, especially from teenager group, at that overweight, obese uh, category. Right, so obesity can be uh, genetics too? So uh, uh, the causes of obesity, genetic is one of mm. them, and epigenetic, which is changes happen during the pregnancy, and environmental, uh, practicing unhealthy lifestyle. We're talking about unhealthy food, lack of physical activity, stress is one of the factors. Medication can cause mm. disease. Some people uh, get affected by any sort of disease, put them down, not able to move, accident, any incidents, and that uh, let them go to the overweight, and if they don't wake up, they'll become obese. So it does not happen overnight. It happened over years. Mm -hmm. And because it's a silent, and it's not painful, it's easily people develop obesity over the years. Oh my God, that is very concerning. Yes. Because you don't really see the repercussions or the consequences right away. You just feel like, you know, you're gaining weight, you'll eventually lose it somehow magically. Yes. And that never happens. Yes, unfortunately. So, Doctor, you mentioned about the report, you know, 66% you said the population of Oman is under the category of obesity. Now, the same report actually mentioned that women are the ones. I mean, who are especially amongst the higher category. Yes. Why is it women that have the higher chances or falling under the category of obesity? Yes, so from that report, we learned that 50% of Omani women do not practice enough physical activity. So they are not really physically active, kind of. And also, uh, remember, women is the one who brings the children. So. Multiple pregnancy uh, put the woman at risk of gaining weight. So we see a lot of these women who will tell you, when I uh, got married, I was 60 or 70. With each pregnancy, they gain somehow 20, 15 kilo, and they never lose it. So over 10 years period, they move from 60 to 160 easily without knowing. So multiple pregnancy is one of them. Again, the lifestyle practice, they are busy, they are not doing physical activity, uh, not eating enough healthy food. Uh, from that report also, uh, we learned that six out of 10 of Omani adult, they don't take uh, the right serving of fruits and vegetables. So people depend on processed food more than the healthy food, unfortunately. Right. And uh, Dr. Du, you mentioned about women, you know, having a lifestyle or a mindset. I, I am still failing to understand with so much, you know, being provided by the authorities here, let's say nutritionists, doctors, gyms, different activities to get yourself involved in. Why do you think that people are actually not looking into, you know, getting more physically active with all the presence of all these facilities around? Yeah, so I think we need more awareness and education uh, so people learn to be responsible, kind of. Because we, in the clinic, we hear a lot of excuses. So in the summer, it is too hot. And in the winter, it is too cold. And there is always something which is tempting. Like mm. in the summer, the fresh dates. And in the winter, <laughs> the, the, the dry dates. But there's always something tempting and some excuses we don't have time. So time management is a key. Uh, people need to learn. And in Oman, people are very social, but unfortunately, socializing with food, <laughs> not socializing with activity. Right. So we need a lot of awareness to encourage people to get together and move instead of get together and sit and eat. 
being an expert of this field, doctor, don't you feel like keeping yourself as the first priority? I mean, as you know, the main priority should be everyone's goal in life. I mean, you said that women sometimes complain that they're busy with kids, they're busy with house chores. But don't you feel, I mean, don't you believe that you should actually prioritize your own health first over other things? Yeah, people sometimes don't see, especially women actually, mm -hmm. they don't see themselves, they see others as uh, priority, like their mm -hmm. kids and the husband and the house and their family. And they lag behind in terms of responsibility for their health. And uh, Fighting chronic diseases, it has to be a focus of the whole family, and it has to be done as a group, not just one individual. So uh, really, we need to highlight the importance of this is responsibility of everybody, and uh, to do it together and encourage people. As you mentioned, Oman is beautiful. Mm. There are so much things they can do, outdoor or indoor. True. But yet, people, uh, not everybody practice enough physical activity. Right. Yeah. And now talking about the challenges, what do you think would be the possible challenges in bringing the number of obesity down? So obesity is a very costly disease, especially when it comes to the comorbidity and disease associated with it. And we have a lot of people at the category of overweight or obese. So here we need management. So we need treatment. And we need to train our people and provide the tools for management. And that needs special budget. So management is a challenge. And working on prevention. For prevention, we need the collaboration of everybody. Uh, fighting obesity is not responsibility of Ministry of Health. Is everybody need to be in board with us. Uh, and, and that's why we're talking government or private. Everybody has to work together to uh, try to uh, encourage people to have physical activity and healthy food at school, uh, at uh, work uh, environment, uh, and their daily practice. Right, right. And now with the availability of almost everything in this country, I think this shouldn't be really a challenge for people to actually follow a healthy diet plan just to start with home, I believe. Yeah, it seems that the unhealthy food is still cheaper than the healthy food. Yes. So maybe we need to work on that. And some cities, they lack the uh, sidewalk, for example, cycling uh, mm -hmm. area. And some area outside Muscat, they see still the women face difficulty in walking outside or facility to swim, for example. So right. there's few challenges across Oman we do need to address to make it easier for people to practice a healthy lifestyle. Right. Yeah. So these were the challenges, Dr. Noor. Now, I know that you mentioned about health implications that obesity can have on one person. Can you tell our viewers about yeah, it? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, obesity or sound like it's not really painful, but it's associated with 200 plus comorbidity. We're talking about cardiovascular disease, diabetes, fatty liver, sleep apnea, uh, musculoskeletal knee issue, back problem, and uh, uh, infertility. There are 13 types of cancer associated with obesity. So it is not a benign disease. And that's why even if we don't feel the pain, people need to go and screen and find out do they have high cholesterol? Do they have high blood pressure? Because this disease is not painful. Having high blood pressure does not hurt. Mm -hmm. Having high cholesterol does not hurt. So we need to find out these diseases associated with obesity to prevent the complication and heart attack, uh, for example. This is so serious, and yet people are taking it so lightly. I'm so glad, you know, the ministry actually came up with this project, like telling people, like, you know, this is the time that we actually need to act upon. Obesity is getting out of control. 66%, Dr. Noor, that's a huge figure. Yes. Now, you know, a lot of times, actually for the last two years, we might see the change in the figure. I'm sure it wasn't 60% since the beginning. People might blame it to COVID because of the lockdowns, because of the unavailability of certain services. Do you think we can actually blame COVID too? So the, the, the survey uh, happened in 2017. Uh, so 66 combined overweight and obesity. But COVID, uh, it did add. People are not moving. They locked down. 
uh, lots of stress. With stress, people tend to eat the food which mm -hmm. they like, which is unhealthy food, unfortunately. So stress does lead to uh, increased uh, weight. Uh, also, eating unhealthy food and the lockdown, nobody is moving. So uh, we did notice increase in weight among our patients, uncontrolled diabetes during the COVID period. And I hope now people will start taking care of their self and uh, get, lose the weight. Because during COVID, those who suffer the most and enter ICU are yeah. the obese population. Uh, they tend to have uh, uh, hypoventilation, unable to breathe well. And uh, uh, COVID, it hit the lung. And that's why they had severe complication uh, in the ICU. So I hope people. Uh, maintain their health, whether there is pandemic or not, because that's the most valuable thing in human. Absolutely, Dr. Noor, well put. And uh, it's really sad to know that, you know, that being such an important factor, like, you know, taking care of your health, now people have become more careless towards it. It really is something that we should ponder upon. Now, on that note, Dr. Noor, what advice would you like to give our viewers or people who are watching right now how to take care of themselves, how to, how to figure out if you are actually falling under obesity? You know, sometimes you feel like, oh, you're just chubby, you're just a little overweight, but yeah. you're not sure if that's the right BMI for your you know, height and your age. Sure. So uh, number one advice I want to tell the people that health is your responsibility. Health is not the responsibility of Ministry of Health. It's your responsibility. Mothers are responsible of their kids and the house. Whatever enter that house is the responsible of the woman. And if you are not sure, we have uh, health uh, centers across Oman. They can go and check whether they are uh, overweight, they are obese, do they have any other comorbidity? and take the steps for management. So the good news, there is treatment for obesity, and we need to seek that treatment. And there is so many ways to prevent obesity, and we need to be proactive and do and take these steps to prevent this disease on our health and our children. Thank you so much, Dr. Noor, once again for taking out time and joining us today. It was such a pleasure to have you and talk over this such an important topic, which is obesity. Thank you once again. Thank you for highlighting obesity and wish you a happy Ramadan. Thank Wishing you. you a happy Ramadan once again. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more interesting videos and updates, stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.